Hi everybody. This lesson is on goods in different industries. Now firstly we're going to look at standardised goods. These are goods that have been mass produced usually on an assembly line. These are goods that produce thousands and thousands of products for the business. They are uniform in quality. That means that they are the same every single time. Now, a very good example of this is a paperclip. So the business is able to produce this en masse on an assembly line very, very quickly and it's the same every time. Customised goods are completely different. They are varied according to the needs of the consumer. These goods are produced with a market focus rather than a production focus. What I mean by a market focus, when we speak of market, we are talking about people. So these types of goods focus in on the consumer. A great example of this is Pantene. Pantene produces shampoo. They don't produce one type of shampoo. They customise their product to suit the different consumers. Some consumers have dry hair. Some consumers have oily hair. Some, hair, some consumers have permed hair coloured hair, etc. So Pantene has produced a number of different types of shampoo to suit their customers. Now perishable goods. We all know perishable, perishable goods very well. These are goods that have a short lifespan as they are consumed quickly. The best example of these is fruit and vegetables at the supermarket. They are bought on a regular basis. The operations team have to consider the following with perishable items. Firstly, the quality. Perishable items can be damaged. They can be damaged on delivery to the store, they can be damaged in the storeroom, and consumers tend to pick apples and bananas up so they can be damaged actually while they're on the shelf. The operations manager must check perishable goods constantly to check their quality. Safety is an important factor here. If a perishable good falls on the shop floor and a person slips on that good, then that could result in legal action against a supermarket. So safety is crucial as well. Cleanliness. We know that fruit and vegetable come from the land. A consumer does not want to find a bug on their banana. So those fruit and vegetables need to be clean and fresh for the consumer to buy. Lead times are incredibly important with perishable items. Supermarkets should never, ever, ever run out of perishable items, but they also shouldn't have too much. If they have too much, then they go off and then they can't sell them. But if they run out of pineapples, then the consumer can, will go to another supermarket to find that. Distribution is obviously very, very important. This talks about how they're going to be delivered, at what time, how many, etc and packaging. Packaging comes back to our point of quality. If the packaging is not secure, then the product could become damaged. And perishable goods need to be stored. Now some perishable items will be, need to be stored in cool places. So the business will have to invest money on refrigeration, for example. Now non-perishable items are more durable goods, such as cars, clothing and furniture. Completely different for the operations manager. This time they need to consider the quality of the materials. Now for example, if I go to the supermarket and I get a non-perishable item which is peanut butter, I'm expecting that that glass, glass packaging is in excellent order. The production is very, very different. It can be more time consuming for the business and therefore there may need to be quality checks along the way. The distribution, once again, we need to make sure that our goods are not da damaged on delivery. And effective infantry management. Now if we go back to our example of the supermarket, supermarkets now have technology to manage their infantry. They want to know how many non-perishable goods they have in their storeroom. They want to know when they are nearly running out so that they can then order more for the consumer. Now our next type of good is called intermediate goods. These are goods that are processed more than once. 
they've already been transformed by one business and then become inputs for another operations process. In our first transformation shown in the picture, we have a timber yard. The timber yard cuts down the trees and then they transform that, those trees into timber planks. That's the end of their business, that is their output. The second transformation occurs by the second business. They buy the input, which is the timber planks, and they transform those timber planks into a finished product, which is the chair, and that becomes our output. So that finishes our lesson on goods in different industries. See you next time. Thank you.